What's going on guys? We're back at it with another one and today I'm going to do a how-to video. How to use live shrimp in the mangroves and around docks. Haven't done a how-to video in a minute. It's been like six or seven months. Before we get into the video, I'd just like to ask you guys, please subscribe to my fishing channel. It is at no cost to you. You're not spending a single penny. Maybe some of you that are unfamiliar with YouTube, when you hit that subscribe button, that does not mean you're actually paying for anything. It is absolutely free. It helps me a whole bunch. I am very close to monetization the only part that i'm lacking is the subscribers so get me up to a thousand subscribers so i can get this channel on a roll i like to do some other fun exciting things for this channel it'll get me out to other places around the country around the world chasing different species and it'll let me be more consistent with posting videos and i'll be able to purchase better camera equipment and for better quality videos so it's a win-win for everyone i get to go to other places around the country and the world fishing you guys get to sit back and enjoy it learn something and have fun while watching it so please take a moment and hit that subscribe button on the bottom right hand side of your screen and I'll greatly appreciate it. Now let's get into the video. I just like to point out everything that I'm using today you sell at Rose Marina. Everything from the leader material which is 40 pound Yuzuri pink fluorocarbon to the fishing rod and this rod right here is a Bull Bay Banshee 7 foot 4 10 to 17 pounds. I sell these at the store as well. The fishing reel which is a Shimano Stratic 4000. The braided line which is 30 pound chartreuse J braid. To the hook that I'm using today, which is Yellowtail Candy Jigs. It's 1 8 ounce white Yellowtail Candy Jig. By the time you're watching this video, you should have received a whole shipment more of these Yellowtail Candy Jigs, just like what you're seeing right here. But first, I'm gonna show you how to tie a loop knot. We're gonna start off with our leader material. Here's the tag end. We're going to create a loop, a half hitch, and pull with tight, but not all the way tight. And that's what it's gonna look like right there. So now you have your leader, a loop, and now your tag end. To leave yourself a little bit of tag end so you can finish off this basic loop knot, thread our tag end into the eye of the Yellowtail Candy Jig. We're gonna bring the eyelet of the jig to the loop that we just made. And we're gonna take our tag end and wrap around our leader four times. One, two, three, and four times. And now you have your tag end here. You're gonna take your tag end and you're gonna go back through the loop that you made before. And that's what it's gonna look like right there. Now you're just going to cinch it down just like that. You wanna cut a little bit of this tag end off. You wanna leave some tag end exposed. So it's gonna look something just like that. A little bit of tag end exposed just in case you get a bigger fish and it pulls a knot tight and my tag end doesn't go right through and a knot fails. And like I said, we're gonna be using some live shrimp today and I'm gonna show you how to rig that in just a second. We're gonna show you how to rig up some live shrimp and you can purchase these live shrimp at Rose Marina. You go directly to the boat rental building, tell them how many dozen you want and we sell them for five dollars a dozen or you're more than welcome to come in to see me eric inside the tackle section of the island coastal outfitter store and i'll be able to sell you everything that you just saw me explaining to you and i'll also be able to add your shrimp onto the receipt and you just present the receipt over to the guys over at the boat rental building now i'm going to show you how to hook a shrimp so i'm going to hook the shrimp right in this hard part of the tail right above the fan i always describe it as where you grab a cocktail shrimp right where your thumb and index finger goes we're going to put the hook point and one side and go right out the other just as simple as that so it's going to look like that it's nice and streamlined with the shrimp and the shrimp's still going to be able to dart backwards and do his thing now if you hook the shrimp in the middle of the body uh, the shrimp kind of just goes down to the bottom and flops on the side it doesn't look so natural i'm not a big fan of hooking it in the head you could certainly do it that way and if you have more success doing that by all means stick to the way that works for you you don't want to just toss the shrimp randomly into open water so i'm not going to cast out in the middle of this canal here the reason for that is there's a lot of catfish that is my pillage pump running you could certainly catch other fish in the middle of the canal besides catfish but for best results you want to fish structure so you want to flip your shrimp under mangrove trees around docks around bridges anywhere that there's structure and i like to flip under this dock or right in front of it or alongside of it there's a lot of snappers sheep's head redfish and other species that hang out here it's like an aquarium down below so i'm just going to do a sidearm cast i'm not going to cast overhand like that if i cast overhand i'm obviously going to cast it over the dock get it snagged up so we're going to cast sidearm 
just like that and flip the shrimp or pitch the shrimp right underneath that dock. I like to leave my bail open and you could put it in a rod holder with the bail open where you could sit here like I do with my finger on a line and wait for the bite. Once you get a bite, you wanna let the fish take it for two or three seconds. You're gonna close your bail, reel down tight, set the hook and get him away from that structure as soon as possible. But now let's wait for the bite. We are getting our first bite here. Just had the line hold pretty good. I'm going to give it a second, make sure the fish is still there. I'm going to close my bail and reel down and we got something. Feels pretty good. Oh, he came off. He came off. That was a pretty good fish. I don't think that was a snapper. Really think that was a redfish. But we're going to get another shrimp on and we're going to toss right back underneath. Have another bite happening here. See the line coming off the spool. I'm going to close my bail. I'm going to reel down. That's up the hook. He's wrapped around some pilings though. So if I can get him out, it's just a little snapper. It's definitely not a keeper. He might be close, but I'm not gonna keep this guy. He's a little small in my opinion. He's probably just at that 10 inch mark, but this is the result right here if you do exactly what I just said. And we're gonna toss this guy back in and we're gonna get another live shrimp on. See so, ya. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting another bite here. Close the bail and he's not there. That's okay. Whatever it was, probably just a smaller snapper, bit the head off the shrimp. Since this is a fresh shrimp, I'm going to still toss it underneath. That fish might come back to it. Like I said, the fish might come back to it and it has, and it's swimming this way with it. So I'm gonna reel down, get him out from those mangroves. Doesn't feel huge. It's another snapper. I oh, know it's a Mayan cichlid. All right, this is an invasive species of fish that is not supposed to be here. I'm definitely going to keep it just for the fact that it is an invasive species and there's a ton of them in here and I really don't want them in this creek. They are delicious to eat. They have nice white clean meat, so it certainly won't go to waste. We are getting another bite here. Pretty quick bites happening today. That's good. And he's not there. He bit the shrimp right to the hook. Look how close I was there. That's okay. I'm gonna get another shrimp on and toss back under. And this bite is pretty good today. And we got it. Oh, we got it. We got a snapper. Not quite big enough, though. Snappers aren't that big yet. But I feel like we're going to see some bigger ones pretty soon here. Get them off the hook, and we'll get a new shrimp on. Let's see if we can get a bigger snapper. See ya. All right. There we go. That feels a little bit better. That uh, definitely feels a little better. He's around the piling. Get him away. It is a keeper snapper. Finally, we got a keeper. Nice. Nice size one, probably about 11 inches or so. Definitely worthwhile keeping. And we're gonna get him right into the ice chest. Try to catch another one. Big runoff here. What do we got? And he's all jammed up in some stuff. I don't know if I'm getting this fish back. Probably not. I don't even know if he's still there, is he? Best thing to do in this situation is to open up your bail. Whatever it was just dumped out a whole bunch of line really, really quick. But I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna have to break off because there's a whole bunch of broken up pilings and lumber underneath this dock. This was a hurricane special from Hurricane Irma. That's why it's so good, but you get snagged up real easy. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting this back. It is, it's part of the game though. When you fish structure like this, something like this is gonna happen. And I'm doing a total 360 of my boat here. And there it is. I didn't end up breaking off, but I lost the fish. But right, here we go. Something just grabbed this really big shrimp. I think he's on. Yep, I got something. What do we have here? I can't believe I had this jumbo shrimp and this little snapper. Come on, man. Only got one keeper snapper in the box. That's just the way fishing is sometimes, right? We're just gonna get the snapper back in. We're gonna put on another shrimp and see if we can get a keeper. We have some river otters over here or something. I think that's what that is over there. Come on, focus in. Come on, focus. I think it's otters. Well, this will conclude the how-to part of my video. I'm gonna show you guys some clips from last weekend when my dad and I went to go explore some other fishing spots upriver, and then we came back to the creek, and you'll see what happened right here.
the day started off a little rough it's like 3 30 we had issues with the anchor knot the anchor rope knot um wouldn't fit through the windlass so uh we guyvered it for sure we cut the rope and we tied a dock line on and we're anchored new spot not the same old mangrove spot that i always fish shocker right well, there is nothing like home, but we gotta try some new areas to find out what's going on. We're at a cool little island in between downtown Fort Myers and the Cape Coral Bridges. At least uh, we're not trespassing. Yeah, there is no trespassing signs, but that's docking up and going onto the island. We got some live bait. We're gonna pitch it around, see if we can catch a fish. We're gonna make our first cast towards this dock here. It's a little bit of current. That's a perfect cast. Hopefully there's some snook or reds or something around here. We shall find out soon. Here we go. Got something on. There it is. And it's a sea trout. How about that? It's really cool. Nice. Nice sea trout. Heck yeah. I was not expecting that all the way back here. Look at that. That's a speckled trout. Oop. There he goes. It's all right. We're going to get another pilcher back on and try it again. We made it back to the mangrove spot in my creek. Uh, like I said, there's probably no place like home. We're going to toss pilchards and pinfish into the typical spot that you always see me fish. Let's see what happens. Here we go. That's a good fish. That's a big fish. What is it? Yeah, jack. Oh, yeah, it is a nice size jack. All right. Not fighting like they normally do. I don't know what's been up with these big jacks recently. I couldn't be a snook. Whatever. That's okay, though. I'm not going to complain too much. Real nice. He should be dumping out line. There he goes. <laughs> heavy jack. Really heavy. He's probably like 10 pounds. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, he's real heavy. Now he's doing a tuna circle of death. Gotta love that drag screaming like that. Just put new braid on my reel. Not really trusting it yet, so I'm still a little hesitant. So this is a good test for this braid. My drag is pretty tight and it's holding up. Can't get my Invisibraid that I typically use in stock. It's been on back water for quite a while. Just have not used J Braid yet. So obviously any new product anyone would be hesitant with after years of using something that has always worked time and time again. This is a nice jack. He's not long, he's just super heavy. He's doing the tuna, the tuna circle now. Come on, buddy. Give it up. Give it up. It's exactly what a tuna does. It goes on her side and just swims in circles. They call them canal tunas, Jack. Yeah. Jeez, he does not want to give in. He's not even that big. That's the thing. <laughs> like he's a nice size fish, but he's not like a giant jack. Come on, game over. All right. Boat flip him. He's just super thick. He's healthy. He's really healthy jack. There he is right there. Yeah, starting to get that yellow in him. Since he's so green, I'm just gonna kill him. Just like that to get the hook out. And nice. there he is, Jack C. Not even 10 pounds. He's like six to eight pounds maybe. And I'm just gonna toss him in just like a football. See ya. Oh, my dad's got a fish on. What do you got there? Went under the dock. Oh, didn't want to go in the dock though. That's definitely where he was heading. He's heading. Snook, nice. There you go. Really nice. First snook of the day. All right, that's enough. I don't need to be going anymore. Okay. A little green. Nice. Nice fish. Not bad at all. Yeah, something like that. 28 or so inches. They're nice, son. Good fish. We're just going to let him go, right? Yes, we are. All right. Send him back home. All right, so let's see if we can get another one. This is a small snook. 
We've got an airplane overhead here. <laughs> but just a little snook, nothing too big. But still, it's my first one of the weekend, so I am excited. Hard fighting little guy. Acrobatic. Come on. All right. You gotta say, there really is nothing like home, huh? <laughs> little squeaker, like 18 inches. We're gonna get him right back in. Let's get another one. Reel down. is gone right no what is it oh, snapper snapper, Mangrove snapper. <laughs> man it was taking line real quick there all right nice keeper mangrove snapper but we're gonna let him go i think we got another fish on here fish on. Fish yep on. double header double two at header. the same double time header. oh yeah i got a snook what do you got dad i don't know <laughs> pretty good pretty heavy all right you got another stingray it's pretty heavy yeah Come on. All right, I, I definitely have a snook here. Wow. I don't know what my dad has. Mine's pretty heavy, Jesus. It might be a giant stingray. Oh, a stingray. Oh. Oh, I've seen that stingray before, I've caught him. He's a safe one to touch. He doesn't have a tail. Wow. I've caught the stingray that my dad just caught here. Actually, a couple times. You see him in one of my how to use live shrimp videos. And I got just a medium, medium sized snook, like a 24, 25 inch snook. There he is, 24, 25 inch snook. We're gonna let him go. And there it is. Wow, that fish is like way the heck. I'm getting out too. Wow, I got him out from that. I don't know how the heck I got him out from that. But he was way back there, not a big snook at all, but he was way way back there i mean he swam all the way to the left then all the way to the right and i got him back and there's that airplane again airplane's always good for the audio and the video they're all like the same size this evening they're not, not big at all still a snook though and he came right off the hook perfect please don't forget to like this video leave some comments and subscribe to my fishing channel and i'd like to thank you for watching this video and my friends always stay fishing and we'll see you on the next one Thank you.